What's up, people? Welcome back. And yeah, we're in my garage today. Uh, my apartment complex apparently is getting a new roof, and they decided to put a generator right outside of my window. So might as well, you know, make a YouTube video out here in this really hot garage. So um, might be sweating a little bit. Um, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fine. Today's video, I'm gonna be answering some of your questions. Quick little note. Um, I got these questions through my Discord server. If you aren't already a member of my Discord, please click the link below and join. There are a couple hundred members there and we all freely talk, share work, give feedback, ask questions. It is a great place for people to connect with one another and, you know, just say what's up. That's the first announcement. The second one, if you haven't already picked up my Creative LUT Pack, it is for any camera that you own, Sony, RED, ARRI, Blackmagic, Panasonic, Canon? I think I said some of them. Um, either way, my recommendation is to use this as a creative LUT at the end of your color grading process. A lot of these LUTs are things that I use to color grade my own personal projects and my own footage. Um, whether it's YouTube projects, commercial projects, things that I've done, these are a lot of the looks that I go for. So feel free to check those out. They are $21. It would mean a lot to support me, the channel, and um, you know, helping me keep this thing going. All right, first question here is from Bryce Miguel on my Discord. He said, how do you go about maintaining composure on set as a DP? I find myself missing small details due to being pulled away from cam by crew, clients, or cast. I create plans, but on shoot day, I never follow them because of distractions. Hmm, good question. So I think a lot of this has to do with experience. A lot of this has to do with practice and setting priorities and establishing boundaries. Um, as a DP, you are one of the people on set that gets pulled in almost every which direction, almost equally as the director sometimes and you're getting pulled to the side by the cast, sometimes the crew, you're getting pulled aside by the director, the producers, um, production designers, sound. There's so many different departments that need your input. And when you're focusing on something very specific, whether you are in the process of lighting a subject and you are in the midst of trying to get this fine detail, moving it you know, within inches and then someone comes to interrupt you. My biggest piece of advice here is to Focus on what is the most important thing to you at that particular moment. You know, a lot of the things that people come up to you and ask can usually wait a minute or two or five or honestly might not even need your input at all. If you're in the process of doing something important like lighting, I would, I would pretty much just say, hey, give me a couple minutes. Let me just finish this and I'll come find you. Um, because at the end of the day, your job is to make the visuals look a certain way. You're in charge of the lighting, you're in charge of the camera. So a lot of the other things that get brought up to you might be secondary in certain instances. So when it comes to plans, like you said, you have plans beforehand and they usually get, you know, washed away because of distractions. Um, I would kind of get used to that. Um, not everything is going to go how you planned it. Majority of times, the way that I look at planning and pre-production is not for this to be the be all answer to how we're gonna run the day. I look at these plans in pre-production as a base for us to elaborate on and having a great foundation, having a great base of where you plan on going throughout the day will allow you the freedom and flexibility to change and alter throughout the day. And with the gaffer, grip, AC, these are people that are gonna consistently come up to you. And it, I wouldn't really look at it as a distraction. I would look at it more as a collaborative conversation. So maybe just changing the way you think about it as well could also help you, um, you know, move forward. So hopefully I answered your question. Let's move on. This is from Ted's Doc. Ted's Doc on my Discord. Any words? For small aspiring cinematographers, I don't have good lighting or professional camera. How do you think I can pr improve in filmmaking? Um, I mean, this is a question that gets thrown around all the time. It's like, is gear important? Is gear not important? To an extent it is, but also to another extent, limitations are where creativity is breeded, I feel sometimes. You know, having only access to one light or 
a window or a light bulb and your iPhone or a Sony, you know, a seven camera or whatever you have utilizing that and making the best out of that. And honestly, for example, if you have just one light bulb, how can you utilize that one light bulb in five different compositions? Can you use it as a background light? Can you use it as a key light? Can you use it as an edge light? How can you utilize one light bulb and move the camera around the light bulb, move the subject around the light bulb to adjust to create different frames within just one single light bulb? If you have just a window, play around with different compositions with utilizing a window straight back, you know, three quarters completely next to the window, shooting through the window. How many different ways can you shoot the subject in a window, practicing exposure, practicing composition, also practicing camera movement. Try to find multiple variations and be able to utilize uh, what you have in various ways. My other piece of advice is to watch a lot of shows and movies. Um, you know, a lot of people will say that watching shows and movies is a waste of time. You should be out doing working or whatever. But as a filmmaker, watching shows and watching movies is kind of imperative to growing and learning because you get to see how these professionals do things. And honestly, I'm one of the worst people to watch things with because I will pause a show or a movie and completely analyze the lighting if I find it so attractive. Whatever the equipment that you do have, you are more than capable of utilizing and making something great, which is natural light and a camera, an iPhone, whatever it is you can you can make something great this is from nick p films a bit of a business question but how do you explain to clients who don't know how budgeting a production works about gear rentals like cameras and lighting kits also how do you explain to clients the benefit of renting a higher end camera and lens kit i tend to struggle with this, explaining those aspects in an easy to digest way so before i became a full dp i was doing a lot of the direct client stuff um, because I had a production company, but now a lot of the things I do is dealing with directors, producers, production companies who already kind of have a base understanding of, you know, what's needed to be accomplished. Uh, but I guess from my experience previously working direct to client, a lot of the times, most of the clients don't really care what you're using. They have no interest in it. They don't have any knowledge in it, but they just want it to look good. They want it to sell their product, sell their brand, sell their business, and make sure that they're getting their money's worth. A lot of times what I used to do, and you know, it really depends on the client too, is I would take a lot of the money that I would get from the budget, which you know might not be a lot, but it would be good enough for me to just pocket it. And I would rent out a camera and rent out a lens and not really pocket anything, but use that opportunity to create something a lot better. The reason for this is, you know, maybe it's not for this client in particular, because if they come to you again and want the same thing, you know, you're always able to pitch something a little bit bigger because of the quality that you then produced. But now that you have this portfolio piece that shows the quality, shows what you were able to accomplish and you know the costs of the rentals, whenever a new client is presented to you that likes that project or you pitch this style project, you can explain to them what is needed to get this exact look that you got for this client over here. And a lot of the times, clients are more willing to agree to something when they see something that is tangible instead of you just elaborating on some tech that most of the time doesn't make sense to them. So my biggest piece of advice is to show, not tell. So if that means eating some money and not getting paid for a couple projects just to create really great portfolio pieces, then that might be, you know, your answer to moving forward and stepping up in the production world. Fabio Cachel, I'm at the beginning of cinematography. I shoot with the Sony a7S3 and the 1635G Master. How can I get the most out of it with one key light? Sometimes I think I need more equipment. So similar to the question that I answered previously, one light can do so much. The amount of times that I actually only use one light is probably more than, you know, not. Again, it has to do with composition here. Placing a light in a subject in a certain area and moving the camera around relative to where the light is to the subject, you can create 10 different looks. Once you start introducing three, four lights, a lot of it is, you know, one's over here, one's over here, one's over here, but once you need to get the fundamentals down first of one light. 
So if one light is behind the subject three quarters, what is that doing? Like this Nova over here, what is this doing? It's lighting the background. It's giving me a little bit of an edge here. It's giving me a little bit of a hair light, but is it wrapping to my face? No, if I were to turn this light off over here, which I will do right now, actually. So turning off the key light, this is what one light does right now. As you can see, it's lighting the background. It's edging me, giving me a hair light, but you notice that it's not lighting my face at all. So understanding the relationship between one light and the subject and where the camera's positioned will better allow you to understand the fundamentals of where lights need to be positioned in order to get the final image. Now, realizing this, that my face is not being lit, it's completely silhouetted, I had to wrap it with a key light right here. Boom, now it is wrapped. Play around with one light, move it around a subject, move the camera around, and just understand the relationship between light, subject, and camera. O. Henley. Question about practice. I spend a lot of time alone and don't have many local friends to help with spec stuff. What would be the best approach to practice to build up a bit of a reel in order to get gigs in the first place? So this question is similar to the one with the one light bulb, you know. Use what you have. If you have a camera, I'm sure you can find someone on Instagram that's near you that can do something, you know, whether they are an athlete whether they skateboard, whether they dance, try to find a friend of yours or someone on Instagram that has some sort of talent, some sort of something that you can just say, hey, I'm looking to build up my reel. Do you mind if we just go spend a couple hours and go shoot something together? You don't need a hundred people to help you. You don't need five friends. A lot of the things that I do is by myself. It's just me playing around with someone who has a really cool talent or something really, you know, whatever, whatever it is we're shooting. A lot of it is just me and not with putting too much stress in myself. Just utilize these opportunities as a fun little practice. Like if you're if you're able to find someone like an athlete and you're at a field and you're doing some you're running, you're doing some cool things. Have some fun with it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to think that this is going to be on my reel. I need to get jobs with this. I need to do this because at that point you're going to start forcing it and it's not going to be enjoyable anymore. So have a good time with it. You're at the beginning stages. So, you know, there's no pressure. Just have fun, learn. And when you get back home looking at your clips, find your top three clips and analyze them and be like, why do I like these three clips over some of the other ones? And that might be because this one I shot far side against the sun over here. So it looks really good. I don't like this one because the sun was way too harsh and it's blowing out the person's face. You know, analyze it and then move on from it. Sid Osendorf. A few thoughts. How do you maintain a work-life balance in a freelance career? How do you determine what gear you'll need for a shoot in order to be able to light it well and not costing the production a lot more than necessary by getting too much gear? How to remain calm on set and not lose your cool when things are going wrong or just being overwhelmed? Mm, good question. Um, first part. So this is something that I, I have a lot of questions about too, because it's something that I'm working on every day. It's something that I, you know, struggle with and I'm not very good at because there's going to be times where I have a planned date with my fiance, for example, and a big job comes up and I have to have a conversation with her and be like, Hey, I, you know, this, this might do something for us. I might, I think I'm going to have to take this. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with communication. A lot of it has to do with understanding your responsibility as a freelancer, as a business owner, as a creative, but also as a, you know, partner, friend. Um, as a freelancer, it's hard to say no a lot of the times because this is your life. It's like, you know, the mentality of, oh, I'm never going to get a job again type thing always keeps you from saying yes to pretty much everything. But it's sometimes you got to fight that. And um, how I how I try to maintain a better work life balance is my girl, my fiance and I, we share a calendar together, actually. So whenever I have jobs or whenever I have anything planned, it goes right into the calendar. So she knows when I'm doing something at what time and where it's located and vice versa. I have her schedule as well. So whenever we have any open days, we usually put something in the calendar that says, date day or you know date night or uh i don't know winery i don't know what whatever it is we usually put it in the calendar so we can block off a day specifically for us and now like i said before does that always you know work out no 
a lot of the times will be leading up to that day and I get a call for a big job and I have to have that talk with her. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, re your relationship with your partner, with your family, your friends. For her, with her, for example, she's been with me for over eight years now. So she's seen all the ups, she's seen all the downs, she knows the goals, she knows the ambition, the motivation of why I do what I do. So she understands that I'm going to have to cancel plans sometimes in order to, you know, make ends meet and pay the bills and move forward with our life in a creative way and you know but i'll but sometimes also i will say no to jobs if i don't feel it is essential to do that job because i'd rather spend time with her or my family so a lot of it has to come down to yeah it's just it's just practice it's just communication and it's just you know being honest with yourself about what you really want to focus on in your life at your at this moment how do you determine what gear you'll need for a shoot in order to be able to light it well but not costing the production a lot more than necessary by getting too much gear so a lot of this has to do with you know the budget that they have if you're able to do a scout you know scouting location with your gaffer and your key grip to see what we need talking with the director about compositions a lot of it just comes down to pre-production and you know what the creative is if there's a lot of money involved then most times there will be a scout and in the scout that's when you determine what your gaffer and grip what is needed to accomplish this you come up with a quote you talk with the gaffer about what what we need you send the quote to production and they will say yes or no depending on what their budget is and a lot of the times i wouldn't get too caught up on the fact of oh we didn't use this one light so we cost them money I'd rather have more lights on standby than not have them at all. Because if you are in need of something, you have it. But if you need it because the image isn't looking good, but you didn't spend the money to get it because you wanted to save a couple hundred bucks, that's an issue because then you can't get the image that you want. So I wouldn't feel too bad sometimes about costing money sometimes with a light laying around. Again, you don't always want to do this, but you want to always make sure that you have enough power to get you through in case any hiccups come arise or any lights break that's another example um, but if you don't have the luxury of a scout a lot of it just has to do with budget like what is your budget that you have here what is the project that we're doing do you have photos of the location and then from there you'll be able to determine what you think you'll need uh, but a lot of it comes with experience and shooting and knowing what certain lights are able to accomplish for you um, so a lot of it is just practice and getting used to certain lights and knowing what their capabilities are. Uh, how do you remain calm on set and not lose your cool when things are going wrong? Yeah, this is a big thing for me and a lot of people will attest that I am pretty calm. Um, a lot of it I think is because I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of meditation. Um, I also am a big believer of stoicism and just calmness and um, a lot of what I do is breathing. Um, it's a very simple, very overlooked, um, you know, exercise essentially is just inhale, exhale. It is a very simple thing, but it is extremely effective. And something else, you know, not all the time am I calm. There's been times where I've gotten really stressed out and that's natural. It helps, you know, or it doesn't, it's natural and it happens. But at the end of the day, you got to just remember that you're making art. You're having a good time. You're doing what you love. You're holding a camera. There's no real need to get super upset about anything. You're not saving lives here. You're creating a commercial. You're creating a film. Just have a good time. Relax. Take a breath. And utilize your team to help you. That's what they're there for. So don't think that you're just alone in this ship. How do you manage... This is by Rod23. How do you manage conflict and creative ideas on set? Manage, manage conflicts on creative ideas on set. As a DP, my role is to aid the director in their creative vision. Now, not saying that I say yes to everything that the director wants, because a lot of the time it's about creative deliberation between each other. It's not really conflict. When there's conflict, there's issues. Um, and nobody really wants issues. Nobody wants conflict. What everyone wants is creative, open collaboration. So changing your mindset from conflict to deliberation will automatically help you switch your mindset to something more positive. 
whether it's with your crew, if your crew has a creative input that, you know, you disagree with at the end of the day, it depends on where you're positioned on set. If you're a DP, you have the control to tell your crew that you want something done a specific way. When it comes to the directors or producers, you also have, you know, your say on how you want things done in a certain way. But at the end of the day, you have to remember your place. You have to remember where, you know, you're located on the scale and Remember that you're there to aid the story. So if the director has something that you might not think work, explain it to them. Talk to them about your vision, about why you think it might not work or be able to provide alternatives. A lot of the times conflict arises when you or someone doesn't agree with something but don't have a solution to follow it. Because you can come and say, hey, I don't think this is going to work here, but I think to accomplish something similar, we could do X, Y, and Z. Instead of just saying, hey, I, I don't think this is going to work, man. And then the person would be like, okay, no, well, what do you what do you want to do then, man? Like, so what do you want to do? And then you're like, I don't know. I, what do you want to do? And it's like, I don't know. What do you want to do? You see what I'm saying here? If you, have a, if you have an issue with something or you don't think something's going to work, just follow it with a solution. Last question here is by I'm Solist. When shooting music videos, how do you know? Would you like to know... How, would like to know how you prepare and brainstorm ideas for it. So a lot of that actually doesn't come from me. A lot of it comes, most of it comes from the director. They'll send a treatment over to me with visual references, visual styles, uh, anything that they want in the video that best represents the artist and the song. And a lot of that it has to do with the director's vision and me aiding it to make it come to life pretty much. Um, so. When I'm doing music videos, the best thing for me is when a director sends treatments and visual references over, sends color palettes, sends textures over, sends all these different things over so I can then analyze it. And then whenever I'm when I'm on set and creating the images, I can refer back to those uh, references to help better, you know, inform my decision making. So that's it for today. Hopefully you learned something from these questions and answers. Again, click the link in the description to join my Discord chat. We have a couple hundred members in there and I would love to see more of you join and collaborate with the community. Um, also, click the link in the description for my creative LUT pack. It would mean a lot to me to support me and the channel. Um, if you have any questions on the LUT, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, have a great day today. I'll see you next time. Peace out.